Thank you everyone for coming this morning. It's fantastic at our inaugural event. Um, yes, thank you gentlemen for joining me. Um, we want to make it quite um, relaxed uh, and interesting and maybe you can share a little bit about yourselves before we start. Um, and then we'll just dive right through. So as Wyvon said earlier, we do have Slido. Any questions, uh, please put it, in, put it through Slido. We've got feedback screens here that will show us your questions, um, and then we can take it. What, what we plan to do is to have a few questions about um, really the industry to start with, and then after that, take some questions from you, yeah? Um, Andres, do you want to start with just introducing yourself and Access Singapore and the rest of it? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Andras Krzysztof. I uh, live in Singapore and I'm a technologist. Uh, I approach this space and the questions from the technology point of view. And I got into this uh, space, the digital technology and uh, decentralized finance in 2013, 2014. And I was one of the founding members of Access Singapore. And uh, I've been in this space uh, ever since uh, building and experimenting. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, very glad has been invited to come here today. And uh, uh, I think most people uh, heard about Hobi, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, we are the ones of the biggest change, global change in the world. And uh, we have been uh, six years, yeah, which has been our celebrate our sixth uh, birthday uh, last week. So yeah, hope I can, we could be do something more and uh, you know, getting make our business group here in, with LeBron and with IBFC. Thank you. Thanks, David. <coughs> Thank you, and congratulations on your 60th anniversary. Um, I am also a technologist by trade, um, but I've always been on the uh, on the side of the business. So uh, I don't do technology for technology's sake. Um, I only do it if um, there is a business reason for it. Uh, it's very exciting to be in the technology uh, space at this moment. Uh, there is a lot of um, exciting things to do. Um, it can be a bit scary, um, to use Andras' word, um, but uh, that I think is, is why uh, we can um, have discussions like this uh, to help each other out. Um, I don't think this is a competitive business. It's actually more of a collaborative business. So I'm, I'm actually very excited to be here. Yeah, no, thank you, gentlemen. And yes, I, I completely agree with Robert. I mean, uh, one of the things that we've started to do is try to understand this business a lot more. And um, what's interesting personally for me, trying to understand this business is that the ethos within this business is completely opposite from box standard financial services, where everyone is very much about what they want as opposed to what they bring to the table. Um, and I guess uh, that's refreshing. Um, and it's a different mindset. It's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. So the first question I have for the panel really is um, intermediation 4.0. What does it mean for you? Where do you see it moving forward? Um, which areas do you think will really fundamentally change how financial services is intermediated? Um, Fintech is fintech. Fintech is collapsing existing uh, processes and protocols. Um, intermediation 4.0, my naive understanding, because I'm not a technologist. Um, I don't begin to be pretend to understand any of it. Um, but my hope is that there will be a real fundamental structural change to how um, we run financial services. So um, whoever's happy to start, I'm happy to just have a conversation about this to begin with, please. Happy to start with that. Um, Thank you. And, and um, I, while I am a technologist by trade, I am um, also uh, very much in, in business. Um, and, and I'm being rolled out as the in insurance expert um, in DXC. So um, forgive me if some of the examples I'll give are more insurance based. Um, I think. Um, there is a lot of change that is driven by technology choices and technology capabilities. Um, but ultimately, it's still the business that is going to have to make that change. So to answer your question about is, is this going to change the business and fundamentally change the business, is it? Up 
business really to make that fundamental change. The technology is there. Yep. The technology can make it happen and it can absolutely blur the boundaries and, and uh, those that are um, audacious enough to, uh, to use those uh, technologies and, and really make those changes obviously within the regulatory frameworks, not making the, 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 uh, the bad players in the market uh, more, <laughs> more effective. But um, still, if you are audacious enough, then uh, yes, you can make those changes and, and it will happen. Um, it will happen. If, if, if you don't make it, someone else will make the change. So um, yes, it will happen. That's my opinion anyway. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I just share my opinion too here. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I think at the past 20 years, I think uh, everybody will see the big change in the world by uh, high tech, especially fintech. But, you know, most people still ask me, you know, in, if we put into the, not just, you know, if we put it specific into the the technology of blockchains. What means blockchains? A lot of people talk to me a lot about the uh, uh, knowledge part, but uh, you know, for the 4.0 of this industry, I think most people really like to see the something realize, right? So um, that's why I, I think you know, because in our group, our some of other uh, country, we already see some thing really happens. You know, for example, you know, I uh, same I've been to Germany and uh, Luxembourg. You can see people they can do the uh, money transferring and uh, doing their purchasing by the, you know, for example, like the bitcoins or they just using their digital wallets and they can do the some custody and loans by the <coughs> by in by, by blockchains. So I think you know the next step to for the you know 4.0 is how to not just make the life convenient. I think we want to make this something efficient, okay, efficiently. Because, uh, you know, um, I think the opinion for the blockchain means, you know, decentralized. I think most people know about decentralized, but it, we still belongs to the legacy finance uh, with uh, the, the traditional, the ML and the KYC procedure. That's necessary. So, you know, in the, I think in the near future, uh, we can see, we, if you check about uh, the education, or you want to check some people's identification, or you want to you know, do some the, uh, business check, will be more uh, open, all the information will be open and uh, efficient. So not just like you know, in the banking system only. So we happy to see something more happen to, to see something you know, um, uh, better, to help us, the life to be better and better. So that's my personal, uh, opinion. I mean, in life. Thank you. So, so we've had a human issue here. Yeah. We've had a transparency plus. We've had a human question mark. We have a transparency plus. Mm -hmm. Andres. Uh, in some ways, I do think it's going to. Uh, I, I foresee significant changes in termination because the the premise of the technology of the distributed technology to to remove unnecessary intermediates. So. This means that it will bring the service, actual service providers closer to the actual customers. This is good news for these two parties and bad news for everybody in, in between. So I, I foresee some potential changes. How, if the technology is successful, things will get simpler, more flat, more efficient, but with less players. And actually, that segues nicely into the next question, right? Because it's about collapsing um, legacy systems. And I was, w I was wondering when that L word was going to come out, actually, legacy. Because that what, that's what we've been called, uh, legacy, um, which is not a bad word. How, how, do you f how do you foresee the challenges in trying to collapse this in a way where it's acceptable to both parties, because really what you're what what you're looking at is a fundamental. It's not a process change. It is a conceptual, existential almost change. So how 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 do you think these two is going? How are they going to come together? This legacy versus digital kind of um, um, argument, as it were, this debate. Um, and so that segues into the next question, which is, 
based on the latest developments within tech, what do you think the top pro opportunities are? And what are the top challenges? And where do you see we're going to end up by the end of 2020, maybe? Wow, that's a lot of questions. Sorry. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I think the most exciting field right now that I can foresee, and please uh, don't forget I'm from the technology point of view, is decentralized finance. The, the ability to deploy uh, financial structures in a decentralized way that could actually make these structures available for people who who we weren't able to reach uh, uh, before this. So for me, this is the most, uh, one of the most exciting advancement that I can see. The biggest challenge that I can see is, is the proper knowledge transfer to the, to the regulators to make sure that they understand how this system can, uh, can work properly and provide the right framework for it to enable it but also contain its, uh, mm. its, uh, its potential dangers. Mm. Contain is a good word. Uh, OK. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a big topic. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, actually, um, I'd, I'd like to share something. Uh, last month, I'd been to uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina. And uh, I issued uh, one topic out. I said, are you ready to be a revolutionary in this industry? What means it? <clears throat> that means it does not mean it's really how brave or how much effort you want to you know you want to put out. That means <clears throat> are you get ready to be the revolutionary? Because um, at the past <clears throat> for the Lexi finance, I think most of the procedure criteria all belongs to part of the people, one of the entity, I mean the unit, or one of the organization. But <clears throat> in the future, we will have the consensus from the most of people. So do you really expect it? Or are you really waiting to join their part? Because some people, as like US, some bank, especially I think you can see check in the news in LA, some bank has been closed, and some most of the employees been fired, and they all, you know, are really mad on the street. Say, oh no, we we, we no, uh, they really you know want to against the the blockchain. Why? They because they lost the job. That's what I mean. You know, I think the the biggest against is the humanity. I really get get ready to. On one side to improve your life, but another side is against your knowledge and your ability you, you have been using for the 20 or 30 years. So uh, I think the biggest challenge is on the each person, I mean the personal problem, you should, you, against yourself. But uh, you know, the, the opportunity is, you know, as so what I, I say, you know, in the every industry, you could make everything efficient and convenient. But uh, I really get ready to get into this industry and uh, looking for the, um, the future life. I think that's the, the, the conflict and the, you know, the, the opportunity you should think about. So I think that's the once question and topic for all of you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, David. All right. First, before I start answering the questions, um, I, I hate the legacy word as well. Um, I, I think everything that is current and everything that we are currently using should be considered legacy um, because everything that we rely on is has to be reliable and basically legacy should be, just be reliable and um, basically everything is digital um, sorry when I started my career decades ago um, I mean I was in IT that was considered digital so um, that was 30 years ago. Um, so really, everything is digital and everything is legacy. So I don't think you can really separate the two. Um, I, I, I like your point about the humanity. I think um, the technology itself is, there's nothing new here, guys. I mean, there's no robots and augmented reality and virtual reality you're talking about. You're talking just plain 
digital zeros and ones just uh, talking to each other. And um, it, there's really nothing new here. It's very proven technology already. So um, it really is the change in the, in the business, in the industry itself, um, where regulators play a role. And I absolutely agree. The ethical questions that come up are are real and, and need to be addressed. And I don't think um, the industry will change until those have been addressed. Um, because I think we've seen this in the Industrial Revolution where people lost their jobs and, and, and uh, moved into cities. And you saw it with the, uh, the Internet Revolution with online shopping. Um, which brings me back to your point about how is this going to change. And, and yes, uh, I agree, it should bring the, 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 the players and the customers uh, much closer together. And is it bad news for the intermediaries? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe they'll figure something out and figure something new out. Um, there, there's, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy on the block. There's other people that are much smarter that look at this and like, ah, there's an opportunity for me here. Um, and, and that is going to happen. Um, and I think only when that happens can we actually answer the ethical question because otherwise the answer is, yeah, sorry, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs, period. That's it. Um, and, and I don't think that's the right answer. So um, there has to be yeah. some alternative, just like with online shopping, and like the stores got a different role. Mm -hmm. So I think intermediaries are going to have a different role. Um, what that role is, I don't know. I'm, I'm not the intermediary. I'm not the expert there. Yeah, well, you, you kind of take comfort in the fact that the biggest online shopper has now got a physical presence store. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's quite ironic in the coming round. So, you know. I, I do remember actually in the on, in advent of online shopping, someone's going to say, oh, it's, it's the end of the malls and the end of the yeah. stores. And I'm like, no, no, I don't think so. They've got a, tri uh, they've and, got a TripAdvisor store in, at the Hong Kong airport now at the minute. So that's, that's quite interesting. Um, so Amazon, let's, let's Amazon go down. Go anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's go down to, to the areas that, 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 that you guys work in. So maybe we start with insurance, right? So 2020, what's going to be the big change yeah, coming so, through? Um, okay. I'm going to be here, a futurist. Uh, now, um, insurance has been a late take up of all type of technologies. Um, they're a risk um, industry, mm -hmm. so uh, risk averse, um, and everybody will do everything at the same time because they're all looking at each other and and who's going to go first, and then once they go, everybody goes. So I do think that 2020 is the year of smart contracts. Um, I do believe that um, there are sufficient insure techs out there now that will bring that industry. Um, the industry players together. So it's the, from the brokers, insurers, and the reinsurers all together, um, all the way to the capital markets. Um, I think that um, that will come together and there will be jostling for position on who owns the customer and who owns the product. And uh, But um, for each type of risk that will, that will change. Um, but I do believe that um, it is that pivotal. I think when you look back at 2020, and I think that will be the pivotal point of that's the smart contract year, um, my opinion, again. No, no. I mean, you're already seeing it in trade finance. You know, with, with the big boys picking Trade it up. Trade finance is the banking cousin of insurance, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to add the bank. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, David. Yeah, I just think about, um, should I give a quote to my boss before I answer this question? This is really confidential. <laughs> you know, it's well, a joke. We, well, he was very <laughs> confidential with us last week. So, yeah, well, I'm sure he won't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you joined it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, um, I think um, most people see the, uh, how, you know, how quick it has been growed at the past five years in blockchain. Uh, I just think bad about a three uh, in the four years ago, I joined some, you know, the meetings and uh, events, you know, for blockchains. Just really around the 20 to 30 people, this is a maximum. No, not, not many people about talking about blockchain now. But, um, 
now you know um, after the uh, the blockchain has been fully supported and uh, announced by the Chinese government, uh, the chairman Xi Jinping, you know that's been already be uh, the the most uh, you know the hot topic in the whole of the Asia area, and uh, that day yeah BTC have been grow out over forty <laughs> percent, yeah, have you voted? <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, I think for two uh, two thousand twenty. Uh, the target, um, as one of my boss has been expected uh, last week, and uh, we will develop the few, you know, the financial infrastructure system uh, around the world that include uh, payment. Uh, payment is linked to the stable tokens that belongs to the each central bank in the, from every country, and. Uh, we were also doing the some loan and uh, some mortgage. Because, for example, just like Thailand, we received the we are the first one. We received the digital bank license, and uh, we cooperated with the Gibraltar. So, uh, Gibraltar government they really willing to you know cooperate with us on something in academy for the education. Yeah, because we're looking for more people to come join this industry, and uh, we're looking for some thing to make life better and uh, efficient as like the education and the medical you know you know in china you've been to the hospital this oh this just terrible you know you see the people lie up there and you should wait to see the doctor maybe you see should wait over a half day you know over six hours but now if we're using the blockchain system you know you can make everything book you don't need to uh worry about it. some people cheat you in the hospital or something and uh and uh, you can just yeah make your life really uh, standard and uh, very 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 efficient. And the uh, same as like in the, the, the same thing will happen in Canada. In a couple of years ago, uh, we already can purchase the uh, our burger, our you know the Coke, in the KFC, in by BTC and uh, some digital assets in Canada. A uh, same as like Luxembourg, they can rent a car, buy the house, or buy the. Uh, uh, by, by the, the digital assets. And uh, also I've been to Switzerland and uh, they will issue some security tokens, security tokens by some real estate. And uh, I've been to Qatar, uh, they are waiting and the plan to change whole of their traditional stock exchange center to the security STO exchange center. So this will be whole no, the big, big ha something will big happen around the world. So, but I cannot tell that very detail. But I can share something to you. That's the opportunity, and uh, I'm really happy to see that some people can join us together. Okay, thank you. Thank you. From the technical point of view, there are two things that holds back the technology, distributed technology, blockchain technology. The two things are speed and privacy. I foresee, I can foresee that both of these will be addressed uh, in 2020, at least it looks like. Uh, blockchain systems, especially public blockchains, are surprisingly slow. We are talking about a couple of dozens of transactions per second worldwide, which is basically peanuts. It's, it's, it's not something that you can actually uh, deal with. This is being fixed, and uh, hopefully we will see an very significant speed up uh, by early 2020. <laughs> and the other thing is, which is usually surprising for people, is uh, that blockchain systems are extremely non-private. Every piece of information is, uh, is out there and can be read by everybody else using the same system, which is not acceptable for serious business. So. What we see now that even in public uh, blockchains, we see very significant advancements in privacy technology. So the, uh, so the business secrets and, uh, and trade secrets of companies can be, uh, can be hidden from the eyes that uh, should not see it. And so these are the two things that it has to be addressed. And what I can see, it, it is being addressed. So it it's almost as if, okay, so that's, that's the thing that really struck me when I first started to try, and I'm still trying to understand this business, is that it's really slow. 
right? For everything that's digital and fintech related and technology and all the rest of it, it's like GPS buffering still at that stage, no? Um, my question to you is a very simple question. When do you think the DLT technology can keep up with, am I gonna use the L word again? The, <laughs> the existing this protocols. Existing speed, speed is what you're saying. Existing speed. When do you think that's really gonna happen? Because, I mean, let, let's be honest here, right? We, we all want um, um, and transparency, we all want equality, we want, we all want what, what, what this space promises us, but until commercially this is viable, and that's about speed, mm -hmm. um, acceptability is always going to be a problem because people are going to resist change. Yeah. Okay? It's natural. So how, how, wh when do you think that speed thing is gonna, you know, we, we get off the speed bump, as it were, um, and, and then we can really talk about acceptance? Mm -hmm. I have a surprisingly precise answer to this. Um, uh, a particular example, one of, the one of the biggest public blockchains out there with smart contracts capability is Ethereum. And Ethereum is, is expected to make the next release in early 2020, January, which will pave the way uh, to significantly speed up the system. Back to existing... Uh, right. E e <laughs> no, no, I, I, I just want to add something. Go sure. Ahead, go ahead. Uh, it is a long topic, and I really don't want to get into the technical details, but even now it is possible to do, uh, to do a lot of transactions that is very close to existing, uh, existing systems uh, on a public blockchain using technologies like, for example, layer two uh, technologies that are, that are attached to the layer one chain. You can do tens of thousands of transactions per second. So the solution is there, but a more robust, more, more accountable solution is in the works. So I, I also think that you need to be careful that um, blockchain and, or distributed ledger technology, I, I hate to use the word blockchain because it, everybody thinks Bitcoin. And yeah. It's like, no. So, so um, I, I, it's a mouthful, distributed ledger technology, but that is really what it is. Um, and uh, I think it is not the new compute mechanism. It is just one of the technologies that you should be using uh, because it does, it's not answer to everything. Um, and you should be using it for places where it solves that um, immutability concept. I think only then will it make sense. And then, I mean, you talk about insurance, obviously, the, the speed is not that big of a deal because you don't have millions of transactions. So I think, um, so for insurance, 2020, I mean, privacy, absolutely, but I think the insure techs have already solved that. So the technology is there. The speed is not a problem. So that's why I believe that for insurance, at least 2020, uh, it's just a matter of implementation and delivery. My, my single word for this, uh, when do you want to use distributed ledger technology if you need accountability? This is what it is for. For everything else, there is something better. Well, actually, there's, there's an inter interesting question that came in on Slido. It reads, it's getting old, so I need to take my glasses. Um, with <laughs> <laughs> um, with blockchain being a public ledger for purposes such as transparency, will privacy tech in blockchain defeat the purpose of blockchain? Mm, no. Short answer, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think yeah, the, the short but also the long answer is no. Uh, I, I mean, it, it the concept of it being an immutable transaction is still there. It's just a matter of this piece of technology, this piece of information that you are allowed to see is the same information that I am allowed to see. Mm. If I'm also allowed to see something else, then I would also have some something else that is linked to it, which is something that David is allowed to see. So I think the, the concept is, is exactly the same. It's just a, a, a matter of, of um, limiting that. Uh, so it, it's still immutable. Uh, I, I think that um, that concept does not go away. There are, I'm sorry, thank you. 
uh, there are some very interesting and uh, like borderline magical features that uh, that are coming out with this uh, thing. For example, I can prove to you that I did the right thing and I have the right information without sharing that right thing or the information with you. But you will see yeah. a mathematical proof that I indeed uh, I am accountable that, yes. without telling you what I actually did. So this is something that is coming out from this re uh, this research, and this is what is being implemented in distributed technologies now. So you can show me without showing me, but it's evidence. That's correct. That I will accept. Yes, that's will. correct because so it's mathematically uh, mathematically probable. So, so the, the the interesting thing, I mean, I, I I completely agree. The interesting thing is this has not been proven in courts quite yet. Yeah. So, so um, we're kind of waiting for the first person to challenge this so that it actually can be proven in court because ultimately that is where the, the reliability uh, comes in. I actually had this discussion a couple of weeks ago and, and we're all kind of waiting and hoping that someone screws up so they can prove that it actually works. Well, uh, bring a test case in. Yeah, yeah bring yeah, a yeah. test case in. Uh, so, but yeah, it, it's, an inter it's still an interesting question so I appreciate the question by the way. Yeah, no, and, and spoken like a true um, insurer related person like is it tested where's the proof da 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 yeah yeah absolutely um i wanted to talk a little bit about defi uh, because i think that's going to change the whole user experience which will change the whole landscape which will change the licenses jurisdictions like lab one start to look at how we start carving the the, the licenses how we start looking at our license holders um, and then from there on, everything else. So if, if, if gentlemen, you'd like to, to kind of share a little bit about DeFi and how DeFi will change existing processes. It's not FinTech, it's not collapsing existing processes. It's about a game changer here and, and the kind of user experience that um, should come through uh, via DeFi, please. Please, May I? Thank and you. what is DeFi? Sorry. DeFi is, what is DeFi? DeFi means, it's basically the DeFi is the new hip word of the, of the industry. It means decentralized finance. And it only means that uh, now it is possible using smart contracts and public distributed ledger technology to deploy financial constructs on a public blockchain where, for example, I can use my digital assets to borrow against. And I don't, need to, I don't need to trust a centralized company in order to do that because I can see what the smart contract is able to or not able to do with my assets. And I only need to trust the mathematical foundations of the technology. And in principle, there is no way for a centralized part or a third party to take my money and run with it because it is on a public ledger. So in short, DeFi, decentralized finance, meaning uh, deploying and, uh, and constructing financial constructs on a, on a public decentralized ledger. So does it, it might, might be a stupid analogy, but isn't it like peer-to-peer -peer on a DLT? Except I don't, there is no, the other peer is not another person or, or a company. Okay. It's, it's, the, it's the blockchain itself. So okay. I don't need to trust a him, entity. him, or, or any, anybody because I can see what can or what cannot happen with my assets. I can okay. see the risk. I can actually see everything. There is no, there is no, the, there is much less possible, much less possibility for a black swan event, so to say, or somebody f uh, defrauding me by, by taking the money. So it's again back to that transparency. Yes, Fantastic. and accountability. Fantastic, David. Yeah, um, talking about the DeFi. Um, what I say, um, I, I was you no. Know, most people are talking about it peer to peer, as you say, about it decentralized. Mm. But um, why don't we focus on the world we call the consensus? What means consensus? This is the, the ones of the opinion or the criteria. Most people, biggest percentage of the people, they agreed. Mm. Okay, so 
it seems like, um, you know, we, we talk about a transparency. If we transfer money from at the past, we transfer money from KL to maybe somewhere, you know, in, in, in throughout the country, maybe we'll take in, you know, T plus one or T plus two, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have the, you know, the, um, the, the procedure, we, we call the SWIFT. Okay, that means is the US government or somebody, the ones of the organization, they will took some budget and expense from you. But, yeah. you know, you, why they want to do that? Most people they say they just want to have the, their, uh, you know, their KYC and the AM procedure. But if we put a whole of this criteria into the system, okay, we still can use that, that, that kind of criteria uh, to protect the people, but we still can make this something more efficient and save your cost. Why not? Right? So that's what my, my opinion is. Um, how to make the life better? This does not mean we steal something from the, some, some people. Okay, you still can live in somewhere. That's people that still live in jungle. But you know, they still can use the phone there. Okay, you still can connect the world outside maybe somewhere you don't know. But it doesn't mean we will steal the, the, your rights to, to learn something. Okay, you still can keep the, your life, but you still can you know, to know somebody else. So, you know, um, for the, the, the world of divine, I still, um, because we had been, re, it's like, no, I had been over, uh, I've been over 40 countries at the past 12 months. I took so many flights. You know, I stayed around the two days in every, in everywhere only. But, you know, I met so many regulators from Middies, from uh, you know, Nigeria, from Australia, Canada, and the whole of the South, you know, East of Asia. You know, most of the regulator like told me that different their opinion and the and their idea. You know about the their you know their their, their in their they still told me that something about the policy, something about the law, something about the their, uh, the community, their society. Everybody got different idea, and and uh, I think that the only thing I can tell is how we could be be fairness and uh, inclusiveness. Okay. To make everybody, not we cannot make everybody happy, but we can make most of people their life fairly and then make people to join the whole of the, 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 the life together. But we just using the blockchain technology. That's it. It does not mean steal something from you, from you, your, the life, your, your career life now. So I think that's another topic you, you should think about. That's what I always asking. Are you ready to, to get into join and get into the next step? And they're ready to enjoying your, the next generation and uh, the life your, 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 your children or your grandchildren they will face too. That, that's my opinion, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm an insurance person, so decentralized finance is, is probably less, um, uh, less top of mind. Mm. Um, I think the, the closest uh, brother to, to that is, is the reinsurance market. Yeah. Um, and I do think the reinsurance market is, uh, is going to be tremendously upset in the next two to three years. Um, I think if, if anybody is uh, familiar with the London market, um, the London market is very much still people sitting with pieces of paper over a cup of coffee or a pint um, and making yeah. decisions about um, who is going to cover what, what risk, risk and yeah. um, uh, and that is going to change. Uh, that I mean, how and what and where exactly and, and about time, I agree. But um, so but that is still the question, but it is going to change. And I think it is the same principle as what you, uh, you guys we're just talking about decentralized finance, that same um, trust, because reinsurance is all about trust. trust. It's like they said, that's why they're sitting in, in pubs and, and coffee shops and talking to each other because they want to look this person in the eye and say, I trust you. Um, yeah. and, and that's why it works and that's why it hasn't been um, uh, upset. But I do think that the smart contracts and, and that level of um, immutability and immutable mm. trust that is mm. built into that blockchain is going to upset that um, that market. Um, so I do think that the reinsurance market is is about to be changed. Fundamentally. Fundamentally. But still human. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 what, that but you won't take the human out of the equation. That, no, that's, uh, absolutely not. 
Um, we have a very interesting question, actually, and it's for David. Um, what do you think uh, the impact, and actually it's, it's for you first, and, and, and anyone, please chip in. Um, what is the impact of the issuance of the stable coins by the Chinese government, so the PBOC coin? Um, what do you think the impact is of the issuance of that coin? Um, and I personally have another question that kind of segues to this is, why do we need a coin? Okay, um, I don't know, have you guys ever seen the, the white paper of the DCIP? That's the, the first step token issue from Chinese governments. Uh, the, uh, lots of people ask me, yeah, yeah why you want to issue that token? A similar question, why the, you know, Facebook want to issue the Libra? You know, so yeah, they're also the, the only thing, the why the people ask that, 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 that question conflict because um, because in U.S. Uh, blockchain, we 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 have to say the digital assets has been regulated yet, but before the Xi Jinping announced it, uh, China we still say China is the only country 100% prohibited, not just restricted. It's 100% prohibited for blockchain and uh, digital assets in the world. It's the only country prohibited. But the day after, you know, yeah. The, the, the gong, yeah, everything has been changed. And uh, why don't you issue it? That's, that's the, I don't know if, if anybody um, see the why, what, what kind of structure of whole of the Chinese economy systems. You know, if you check whole of the, the, the structures of the Chinese economy, you can see, uh, you know, the, the first, the biggest percentage of the profit, you know, industry is back. Mm. And number two, is real estate, okay? Either, you know, you, you, you till the number eight, maybe you can see that some technology part comes out. What it means that? What it means that? That means in China, they need some more people. They need to join some new field and uh, to create some new ideas out, not stay in that traditional. So I think there's still something risky in uh, some province, Chinese government, they see. They look and uh, push the people to create something new and not just stay in some way you just feel comfortable. Okay, this, uh, that's the economy part in, for the Chinese government. Uh, but for the um, international part, why they start to regulate it? Um, honestly, um, some few of the meeting is still, they, they, they're still hosting in, in Shenzhen and uh, Shanghai now, now in this moment, and they will uh, no talk till maybe end of this month, and uh, we will talk about how to join and uh, stem out to the whole of the world by blockchain together. Okay, on blockchains. Uh, I, I I heard of Brown found some good friends in inside of the you know the the Chinese government because I worked for the Chinese government for six years. Either I'm Canadian, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I knew their structure. I, I know the, the, the whole of the, you know, the system pretty well. So I think, the, because everybody knows, China is one political party only, one communism party. So the, also, but that's why they have the very strong in, you know, internal conflict. So that's why the, why the Xi Jinping, they did a lot, a lot of things in the past you know, six, five to six years. Because they still want to find out the, some new thing to improve people, to push the people, to because something that the, the, the habit is does not mean it's good, you know. Some habit is you know just make people they stay in some way satisfied, but it doesn't mean you can make their life better. Okay, so some people they hold some rights or sit, you no know, keep in that seat too long. Maybe also it's not not you know the good choices. So um, I think you no, know, they just want to make the whole of the ecosystems to be lively. And uh, either maybe you did something wrong, doesn't matter, but you should go try it. Okay, that's the, that's the I think that's the opinion and uh, uh, the, 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 the why the Chinese government want to issue the, the tokens, yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't know if anybody else on the panel has got anything to say about that, okay. Um, we've got a question on DeFi actually, uh, Andreas. Um, which is quite interesting because it talks about, um, 
it talks about the effect of DeFi um, via existing um, applications and how do you, how, you know, what are the biggest risks of DeFi applications and the opportunities of DeFi? Uh, it, is, it is a very, very interesting field and uh, uh, as I mentioned to him just before the talk that I'm really excited to see DeFi and I am really, and basically I'm seeing DeFi and uh, deployed DeFi constructs to make the same mistakes as the industry made when the industry was created many, many, many years ago. So it is not a silver bullet. This is not something that is, uh, that is, solve everything. that it will solve everything, but it's something that has a lot of potential and needs to grow. But uh, right now the existing DeFi systems are flawed. I can see uh. them, I can see them happening, I can see them uh, collapsing uh, potentially because people are being too greedy, people are trying to to make too much money on, on, on the system that is not mm. for this purpose, so they are not without their own flaws, mm. but they have a lot of potential. And this is what excites me to see that how far it can be taken and how far we can use the the well-known and researched uh, concepts that we have in finance uh, in a more accountable, more, more publicly uh, accountable way. When, when you say not successful, people, well, myself anyway, look at it and go, oh, let's forget about it. But this is something that, that I guess is, 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 is uh, um, kind of the different approach. It's an example of the different approach. When you say unsuccessful, it's an opportunity to make it better. It's like, it's like the right? first flight. It was like 100, 100 meters. But, we shouldn't, but because of that, we should not actually abandon airplanes. Uh, so this is the same I thing. Like it, it. it needs to start somewhere. It's the first step, and, but a very important step. Yes. So I, I guess, it's, it's, you know, I guess my, the point I'm trying to make is it's in the terminology. It's in the context. When something fails in, in, this, in the business of technology, it's not a bad thing. In the business of finance, it's terrible. Yeah, it, this do, field. Do you see what I mean? Yes. Yeah, and, and, and this is where the two, I think, need to meet almost. Yes. Yeah. You, you I want mean, to this say is, something? Yeah, no, it, 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 this, I see this in insurance all the time, right? Insurance is the most conservative industries yeah. that you can think of. Mm. And um, yeah, mistakes are being frowned upon uh, to the point that when you are off by, uh, the sixth digit of a percentage point uh, in your okay, calculations, yeah. then they're going to say, sorry, the system is broken. Um, and I'm like, and that costs you how many what? cents? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, um, so I, I, yeah, I, I, I hear you. And, and that uh, is a, uh, it is a problem. Um, because the insurance industry, it, for sure, is not going to accept anything that is flawed. Uh, but you have to, because ultimately, uh, otherwise, you're not going to change. So it is uh, a delicate balance, and I, uh, I, I know you know, the finance is not going to accept a, a, a mistake, and IT is going to say, sorry, uh, you don't have a choice. Um, you grow with your mistakes. You grow with your mistakes. I mean, this is why, I mean, why COBOL is still running the backend systems of pretty much, I would say, all of your companies. <laughs> <laughs> this, this field is under active research. These, uh, these systems are breaking new ground every day. So this is, at this point, it is kind of expected that this is part of the experimentation. And mm. this is also very important for, understand, for us to understand that this technology is extremely young. Mm, yeah. And uh, it does need to mature to mm. be able to accept it, but it has a huge potential. Probably only limited by the humans that run it. Absolutely. <laughs> Gentlemen, we've got two minutes on the clock. Um, I'm wondering whether um, three of you would like to just close out with your, your aspirations for next year, where you'd like to see the industry moving forward. Um, 
Andreas, do you want to start? Oh, I, I just, I just want to reiterate what I said. I'm looking forward to see more speed and more privacy and more, uh, more accountability out of these systems. Thank you, David. Uh, yeah, I think you know, um, blockchain is still, s still on the very beginning stage, so there's still a lot of opportunity. But uh, some people, most people, they still tell me, it's like my mom, they say, you know, I don't want to know it. It's, it's scary. <laughs> you know, there's just yes. something too new. You know, I don't want to involve it. Yeah. But you know, you never know. You know, what will be change? And then make your life better or worse. Either one. I think you should know. I think you still have the chance to to let yourself to know what's blockchain. So whatever any kind of field, blockchain will get into your life. Either in education, your uh, foods, your you know, the, um, the, uh, the medical, anything. They will involve it very, very soon. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just hope to you, everybody can, not, not just on the digital assets part, that's mm -hmm. that you know, Robert said, you know, BTC, Bitcoins, no, doesn't no, represent the, 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 the blockchain. Blockchain is, is a very, you know, the huge topic. It, it's a big felt, okay. Uh, some people talking about uh, the, the business issue, build up the one enclosed ecosystem. Okay, keep in that cycle. But uh, you know, I, I really cannot expect how big this cycle is. It. Mm. Yeah, so I just hope everybody can spend some time and uh, either, don't worry about, just, just like, you no, know, you spend the time, you read a novel. Maybe today you open a book, tomorrow, like now you, you open your computer or your notebook to read uh, the, the novel or the magazine. That, that mean your life already been changed, right? So yeah, make your life change and uh, make you still make yourself self comfortable. That mean you know something already you still step into the next generation. Okay. I know I'm 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 giving zero to fine. It's all right. So oh my anyway. God, it's flashing, it's flashing. <laughs> um, so no, I, I I'll keep it short. I mean I think um, I, I echo echo their comments. I, I, it is going to happen, so you have to do something. I think uh, the, the the part that if you are in a position to use blockchain, start using blockchain. Find some place where you believe there is a real in it and and do it. Don't um, shy away and don't think like, well, this may fail. Of course it may fail, um, but then you have an opportunity to say, okay, well, let's let's do something different, or or try it again, or or um, do it differently, uh, but do it. Don't do proof of concepts and demos because, sorry, they've been done. It works. Blockchain as a technology works. That's not the question. You don't need to prove that anymore. So when you want to prove it. Prove it by proving business value. And you prove business value, everybody will be on board. And then before you know it, you're successful with, with your distributed ledger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yes, One last sentence. You will know that blockchain is successful when it will disappear from the headlines, when yeah. it will be part of the technology and will do its job without us having to know about it. I agree. That's, that's a very good point. Very, very good point. So we stop talking about it and we start being it, it being part of us. Um, so all that's left for me to do is to thank my panelists and to remind you to just free your mind and the rest will follow, as they say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.